so that's a low complexity question. The same question right here, this one we're going to look at a moderate. So I'm going to put them right side by side or top to bottom so you can see what's going on. This one is low, this one is moderate, and I'm going to take the next one. And this one right here is a high complexity problem, all right? So let's move on to the actual moderate. As you look, what I want you to focus on is this, okay? One was asking you what is the force that causes the block to move down the tray or the plastic tray, but let's read the question. The question says, here is the question. So as soon as I see that, I'm going to put Q because I need to know exactly what I'm answering. So I put my Q. Let's roll over and read so we under give a, a better understanding. It says, Felipe and Marshall were studying forces and decided to do an experiment. Okay? So I use my selective underlining there. Then it says, they placed four equally sized blocks. I want to underline that. Made of different material on an elevated plastic tray. I want to underline that. They watch the blocks move down the tray. Their setup is shown below. So now, do we need to underline that their setup is shown below? No, we don't need that. What we need to do, as a matter of fact, we need to know we're studying forces, okay? We know that force, first of all, I can put me a little note right here and say, Force is a P or P, all right? Force is a push or pull. That's what force is, okay? And it's basically applied to any object. A push or a pull applied to any object. Okay, let's move on now. So now, here is our question. We know, first of all, that they're doing an experiment, and we know that they have different materials, and we know that it's moving down a plastic tray. Now, it's going in that direction. Remember, we're doing a moderate complexity. So let's go back. The question now says, which block would experience least amount of friction as it moved down the tray? Which block? So now it's trying to get us to figure out, do we understand opposing forces based on the type of materials that they're made of or the object is made out of? Look, first of all, the plastic block, is it going to roll down? Yeah, it will move down. Um, what about the sponge? Yes, all of these will move down. But we're trying to find out least friction. Let's make sure we understand what friction is. If the blocks are going in that direction, friction is going to prevent me or pull me back in that way. All right? So friction is going to oppose me or prevent me from going in that direction or in the direction I want to go. So look at this. Sandpaper. Sandpaper looks like that. It has a bunch of um, grits on there or stubs on there. And these guys basically is going to create a rough surface so it's not going to move down the block um, fastest. The other one here, ice, we know it's going to move down very fast because it has less friction because when the heat uh, melts the ice then the water is going to provide an actual surface for it to slide on. But the question is asking us which experience the least amount of friction. Least amount of friction simply means the least opposing force. The least opposing force. So let's find out what has the most opposing force. This one here has the most opposing force because that right there is what? The sandpaper. So that cannot be the answer. Okay? Then we move over to the next most opposing. This is the sponge block. Is this going to move down, move down quickly? No. So we cross that out. We have two now that we're working with, D and A. Plastic block. 
Okay, the plastic block may move down a little faster because plastic on plastic, I can see why it would move down a little faster than the sponge and the sandpaper. But now we know automatically that the fastest one that's going to go down is going to be the ice block. Ice block because when you heat up the ice, ice block, when you heat up the ice, it's going to what? Melt and it's going to have water. And then the water is going to act as a sliding force that helps to what? Make it easier for the block to move down the tray. Okay? So that's basically our answer. This is going to be our answer. Okay? So we move from a low complexity to a moderate complexity. The low complexity was asking us about the type of force. And then this one is asking us which material. Alright? Let's see what the high complexity is talking about. Our high complexity now, this is our high complexity. High complexity, same question, same setup, but look what's going on. Look what they're asking for. They're saying which of the following conclusion can Felipe and Marsha make about the forces that cause the blocks to move down the tray? What or which conclusion can you draw from it? Look at that. It said the force of friction is the same on all the blocks. That is not true. That is a false statement. So right away, we know we can eliminate that one. The next one says, the force of friction causes the speed of each of the block to increase. Now, we know that friction is going to move us backwards. Not really backwards, but it's going to what? Hinder us or prevent us from moving forwards, okay? So we know that cannot be the answer because friction is an opposing force. It doesn't allow you to speed up. It doesn't permit you to speed up. It slows you down. Let's look at C. The force of gravity causes all the blocks to move what? At the same speed, okay? Let's come back to that one. It said the force of gravity is greater than the what? The force of friction on all the blocks. But look what it's saying. It says which of the following conclusion can I or Felipe, the person who is doing the study, um, about the forces that cause the blocks to move down the train. What caused the block to move down the train? We know that it's what? Gravity. So let's hold on to this one. Now let's go back and we're going to actually find out. We have a 50-50 chance right now of getting the correct answer. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Here I said the force of gravity causes all the blocks to move at the same speed. See the word all right here? We know that right there is not, everything doesn't happen at the same time and at the same speed. So based on that, that's a generalized statement. When you hear a generalized or see a generalized statement, you want to stay away from those guys. So right away we know that's incorrect because the what? The ice is going to move faster than the sponge, than the sandpaper, than the plastic. So we know that this guy here is going to move faster. Why? Because, just like we said on the other moderate question, that the ice basically melts because of heat, causing the water equal H2O, and so we got the water that is underneath the ice creating a surface that makes it what? Slide down the tray. So now we come back and we're saying the force that causes it down to move down the tray, gravity is greater than the force that's opposing it. All right? This D is our correct answer. All right? So now, today, we talk about the level of complexity. We look at low complexity, we look at moderate complexity, and we looked at high complexity. Okay? Low complexity, you just need to know the facts. Moderate complexity, you need to compare and understand what material you're working with. High complexity, you really have to understand what role does the forces play on each of the material. Alright? So that's kind of what we talked about today. And I wanted to let you know that taking a test 
doesn't have to be a strenuous thing, although every test in life is strenuous and it requires a great amount of thinking. And so therefore, in your thinking, I want you to understand that you can do your best. You can even do better than you think you can do if you simply apply these principles. Use your selective underlining, meaning you're going to pick out only the key words that you need to actually answer the question. So that's going to reduce the amount of reading that you're going to do, and it's going to reduce the amount of information that you're going to focus on at a particular time. Then after you do that, you need to make sure you have some kind of strategy that you're going to use to basically differentiate between the answers that are false and then the answers that are almost true. You want to go ahead and immediately get rid of the ones that you know that are false. These guys are called distractors. Once you get rid of these guys, then it kind of narrows down the playing field to a 50-50 chance. And even though you have a 50-50 chance, you have to have some background knowledge to help you to hone in on that correct answer. Again, this is Andrew Guy. Just want to make science a little bit more practical. And if you're taking a science test at any time, remember, reading is fundamental. You should make it fun. And when it's fun, learning becomes fun. And when learning is fun, life changes for the better. Take care. Leave us a comment. Let us know how these videos are helping you. Again, take care. Have a good day.